In this video, we look at an introduction to section 1.7, uh, which is a section on what are called bifurcation, bifurcation plots. And by way of example, we'll look at um, an introductory example to dy dt is equal to y squared minus alpha, where alpha is a parameter parameter that can change. And this differential equation is of the form dy dt is equal to y comma alpha, where alpha is a parameter and y is the independent variable. Sometimes they'll write this as f subscript of alpha of y. This is the book's notation. Okay. So the idea here is to see what we can say about the differential equation for various values of alpha. So for example, if alpha is equal to zero, then dy dt is equal to y squared, which is the right-hand side of the DE evaluated at alpha equals zero as a function of y. Um, creating a plot of the right-hand side of this DE and the y, f of y plane, uh, is a parabola y squared. Okay. One can draw a phase line. One can draw a phase line from this right hand side. Okay. There's only one equilibrium point at y is equal to zero and the right hand side is positive for values of y on either side of y equals zero. So there's the phase line which shows that y equals zero is a node. What we're seeing then in this example is that solutions to the differential equation in the TY plane based on this phase line will have a equilibrium solution at y equals zero. Any solution through some other initial condition will all trend upwards. Right. Initial conditions below will come up and then have to level off. Okay, and we get all that uh, solution information to y of t to this differential equation because of the phase line. The question is what happens when alpha becomes different values? Okay. When alpha is, for example, equal to when alpha Sorry. When alpha is equal to 1, for example, the differential equation is dy dt is equal to f subscript 1 as a function of y, which is y squared minus 1, which implies that when you create a plot of the right-hand side of the differential equation, we have a parabola that has a y-intercept of negative 1. And therefore, the two zeros are at, um, this is in the y, f of y plane, are at a value of y equals 1 and y equals negative 1, which implies that your phase line has two equilibria on it, at negative 1 and 1. And the phase line is positive because this part of the right-hand side is positive for y bigger than 1. Between negative 1 and 1, the right-hand side is negative, and then for y less than negative 1, positive again. So y equals 1 is a source, and y equals 1 is a sink. So we've seen a change in the behavior of this differential equation for um, different values of alpha. Okay. Putting all of this together, we arrive at um, our third plot and the, the important plot from this section 1.7, the idea of a bifurcation plot. Bifurcation plots are plots that are going on in a third set of axes where the x-axis is going to be alpha, the parameter and the vertical axis is y. And the way to view this plot is to view it as vertical lines 
each one of these being a phase line, each of the vertical lines being a phase line for that various value of alpha. Okay. So we knew that when alpha is zero, there was an equilibrium, dots or equilibriums in these plots. And when alpha is one, there was an equilibrium at one and negative one. So we put dots at a y value of one and negative one. And the question becomes what happens for the rest of the values of alpha? What about the other vertical values? even including over here alpha less than zero. Note that in this region, when alpha is less than zero, the right-hand side of the differential equation f sub alpha of y will be y squared minus some negative number for alpha. Alpha would be a negative number, whatever it is, which means that y squared would be plus alpha and the right-hand side of the DE is always positive, so there's no equilibrium solutions, but the phase lines are always pointing upward. Okay. So what about the case where there are alpha greater than zero, okay, as in this condition over here, alpha greater than zero. Um, we can look at that case in general Okay, let's look at this in pink. Just analyze the equation f sub alpha of y equal to y squared minus alpha. Set that equal to zero to get alpha, then y is equal to plus or minus the square root of alpha. This plot tells you that in the alpha y plane, or writing y as a function of alpha, you have these, this plot, the top branch here, is the branch y is equal to plus the square root of alpha and the bottom branch is y is equal to negative square root of alpha. Okay, because alpha was positive, because alpha was positive, we were able to see that the plot of the right hand side in the y f of alpha of y plane was going to be a parabola that was shifted down, so there were always two equilibrium. These two equilibria are plus the square root of alpha and minus the square root of alpha. So each, for each alpha, you're going to get two equilibrium, and the phase lines are going to be positive, negative, and then positive. And that is what can be gleaned from just the plot of, for a general value of positive alpha. So putting all that together leads us to the following plot here. We can see that there are a couple, you can see that there's a couple plots here, uh, one being the right-hand side of the differential equation. And you can see that for various values of mu, in this case, we're calling it mu instead of alpha, for various values of mu, when mu is positive, the right-hand side is shifting down, and there are always two equilibria right here and right here, where the right-hand side crosses the x-axis. And when alpha mu goes positive, there are no equilibria. And that turns into the bifurcation diagram for various values of the parameter, we're getting the parabola turned on its side plus square root of alpha and minus square root of alpha. The vertical line is the various value alpha. There are always two equilibrium. And to the above this branch, the phase line says that the solutions are pointing um, up, down, and then up again. Okay, That compares to what's going on in the vector field case. Let me make this a little bit bigger. Oh, I guess I can't. Let me try to make this a little bigger. Okay, so here's the vector field, or the, sorry, the slope field for various values of the parameter. When the parameter is zero, there's an equilibrium, and all the solutions 
and all more streamlines, all the solutions are tending upward because there's one equilibrium and the phase line said the lines point up and then up. Okay. As soon as mu goes negative, there were no equilibrium. So there went our equilibrium and all the phase lines were pointing upward. So all solutions are uh, going up to positive infinity in positive time. When mu becomes, goes, switches back to be positive, we're now seeing the two equilibrium cases right along here and right along the bottom here at plus or minus the square root of the parameter. And the phase line said that they the pointed up between the two roots or equilibrium solutions. There was a negative or a downward pointing arrow on the phase line and for um, values less than the lower equilibrium solution, the arrow is pointing upward. So solutions come upward towards this equilibrium. So that completes a first introduction to the idea of phase lines um, in the context of uh, a pretty straightforward example. The next video will address hopefully a slightly more complicated example.